Now we can look at the second problem on the back side of your worksheet for today's virtual lecture. And again, I've taken the problem and just kind of enlarged the text a little bit so it's easier to read in the video. A small charged particle has a mass of 2.40 e to the minus fifth kilograms and a charge of 4.50 e to the minus ninth coulomb. If this particle travels at a speed of 5.50 meters per second perpendicularly into a 50 tesla magnetic field, what is the radius of the resulting path? Show your work. So the first thing I want to say here is what I'm basically describing is a particular device that was described in one of the videos called a mass spectrometer. So you want to go back and you want to watch the videos related to a mass spectrometer. And this is the part of the device which actually comes right after the velocity selector. So you notice I used the same values that we had in the previous problem. So the 5.5 meters per second is the speed coming out of the velocity selector and it continues in a region of magnetic field but the electric field isn't there anymore. So now we can talk about the values we have. So we'll start off with the mass and the charge. And 2.40 kilograms, hmm, hold on. That should be 2.40 e to the minus fifth kilograms, a really small particle. And it has a really small charge as well. So this is a nanocoulomb, which makes a lot more sense because mass spectrometers don't work on large objects. So rather than re-record the video, I'll just use that as an extra teaching moment there. And then again, we've got values that came out from the velocity selector and so I know my speed and my magnetic field. So those are the knowns for this particular path, uh, problem. Now right now it would seem like I don't quite have enough information but if you go back and you watch the pre-lecture video about the mass spectrometer or look in your textbook we see that there's an equation which relates the centripetal force to the magnetic force. And as we go through that, if we solve that for the radius, I can see how it's related to these other quantities. Now it depends on the mass and the velocity. It also depends on the charge and the magnetic field. Now you can tell from some of my copying and pasting here that I actually have this already plugged in. And so I could plug these known values into this equation. And I'm going to let you do that. Remember whenever you have two things in the bottom you want to use an extra set of parentheses around there. Now real quick talking about these units. If you go back and you replace Tesla with what we had from the earlier videos and then you replace Newton with what a Newton is equal to, you'll see how this all cancels out. But I also want to remind you, what is it we're solving for? We're looking for a radius. What kind of unit should I get for a radius? So again, on your problem here, you want to make sure that you show all your work, and I haven't shown everything here. You have to do the last step of actually solving the problem and putting down the final units. If you're not quite understanding, go back, watch the video on the mass spectrometer so you understand what we're trying to do and where these equations come from so that we're able to actually solve this problem.